Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about cybersecurity. So let's get into it. So the question in question was a bit of a story. Frederick, I know that you've already talked a little bit about cybersecurity, but I have a question. How much actual programming is involved in work as an ethical hacker, especially as a pen tester? I study software engineering, but I'm also interested in ethical hacking because it's nice to combine what you love to do with helping other people. And one, I'm wondering if I should study cybersecurity as my master. The problem is that I really enjoy pure programming and this is what I want to work with for the rest of my life. Therefore, I wonder how much programming does an ethical, ethical hacker actually need to do? I heard that Pentester pen did s do some programming, but it's as, is it as much as a developer or does is it just a little bit? You you have called yourself an amateur in the field, but you are very knowledgeable. Well, thank you. And if you, just to make this damn clear, guys, I am not a professional pen tester. I am far from uh, a professional uh, anything in the hacking space. I am an enthusiast and I am an amateur and I have done the exercises and used the tools and like done some fu fun capture the flag stuff and some work related stuff as well, but I'm not a professional. Making that sure. All right. So, uh, and you are very knowledgeable, so I guess you know something. Yes, I do know something. You said also that you did ethical hacking once, and you said it was boring. Well, y yes, I I, th I liked it. That's t a little bit taken out of the taken out of the context. But yes, I thought after four hours of uh, of reverse engineering and stuff like that, it gets a little bit boring. I'm not saying that the the profession is boring. What did you actually do? All right, so there's more than one question here. If my biggest ambition is to be a senior developer, is it even worth doing a master? So it's three questions, all right? Isn't it better for me, my age is 32, to go straight to the workplace and instead practice my craft and learn new languages and frameworks? I don't think I will have a problem finding a job because I'm really enthusiastic about it and de even doing stuff that people, some people consider boring, like testing and writing documentation. Sorry for ri writing that much. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Well, thank you, and you have a nice day. All right, let's start at the top. First question from all this is how much programming is involved in ethical hacking and being a pen tester? I will say minimum, like a minimal amount, but it also depends on what you're going to do within that space. Because as you can imagine, saying that you're a doctor or saying that you're a hacker or saying that you're a programmer leaves a lot of space to cover. There's a lot of there's a lot in between. What what specific thing are you doing within that space? And the same thing goes, I mean from if you're a programmer you can be a back-end developer a front-end developer full stack devops like there's so much right pen testers have the same sort of situation you can focus on specific areas specific types of exploits and you can be a specialist and you can be a bit of a generalist there's many ways that you can go about that industry but in general terms the so sort of pen testing that you do when you for example, test out web applications, if we assume here that you actually are doing that sort of work, won't require you to have the same in-depth knowledge of coding as a software developer, because these are two very different types of professions. So although it is useful for you to have skills with coding, especially if you're going to be a bug bounty hunter or something like that, you, th there is a use for it, but it's not going to be all that valuable to you in comparison to learning how to work with say networking and understanding networks understanding the common exploits out there like how are systems usually exploited and the tooling the tooling is a big part of it there's tons and tons and tons of tools that are very very useful to a pen tester or a bug bounty hunter people in this space that you should know about and these tools are practically irrelevant for a software developer so as your question here goes like if you should do a master's in cybersecurity I, I'm just gonna tell you right now all the odds are that you're not actually gonna get enough training 
towards being a software developer. That's basically what I'm saying. You're you're in a uh, you're in the wrong profession. It's uh, it's like trying to go through a QA course, trying to become a developer. It's it's not going to leave you in a good place because the standards of coding for writing software and application development is a lot. It it, it is practically unless you're going into research level stuff as high as it's going to get. Everything else is. Uh, like it's underneath that level if that makes sense because you need as a software developer to learn quite more than just how to read code you need to learn about architecture practices like uh, object-oriented programming the different principles uh, design pad like uh, design patterns and all this other stuff that comes with the process of developing so making that clear no I don't think that if your desire is to be a senior developer that you should go into a master's in uh, cybersecurity and that also covers the second question, how much how, how much development is actually involved. There are exceptions to this, so let's say for the sake of argument that you're into system levels, develop, uh, system levels exploits and like exploits that are much lower level. Let's say that you're trying to exploit uh, embedded systems. Let's say that you're trying to explore, uh, like exploit, uh, well you don't have to go that far, you can, ha I mean I have I have acquaintances who have a full-time profession in trying to exploit uh, cars like uh, and that is technically embedded systems but IoT devices and things of that nature where a more in-depth understanding of coding might actually be very useful to you. Other examples would be let's say that you're trying to reverse engineer things that's also something that can be really useful in that scenario it's very useful to know about coding but once again you're not going to have to know as much as a software developer because the software developer has a much higher standard on more stuff that isn't really relevant necessarily to exploiting the system. So other things that I mean uh, learning if you're gonna have some coding skills within this space I think that you should look into things like it, for the low level stuff C or C++ for everyday average programming and if you're just doing web exploits and things like that uh, Python will do just fine because most of what you're gonna do is writing scripts and things like that to help with automation and brute forcing and things of this nature uh, JavaScript is also of course very useful to have an understanding of you don't have to be a master of it but there is a lot of uh, exploits related to JavaScript and the web space right all right, so going down the list, you're also asking me what type of exploits that I used to do, like what uh, what type of ethical hacking I've done. And that's very simple. Most of the stuff that I've done is either capture the flag type of things, which are, is basically just exercises. You get a virtual machine somewhere or like a Docker image or something like that, where you're basically asked, okay, can you exploit this system in some fashion? That is the thing that I do in my, I've done in my private time. That's the thing that I think is sort of fun to do sometimes. And the stuff that I've done in a more professional environment has just been a few cases where we have had to reverse engineer mobile apps. And I think at one point it was a flash application to try to exploit it in favor of my company. It was technically legal, but basically it wasn't intended to work that way because what we did in essence was reverse app, uh, reverse engineer an app figure out how like the like the um, URLs or what the URLs were and how to connect to different things and so forth and then how to overcome a cell pinning and a few of these sorts of things so nothing fancy and nothing major uh, at all and then lastly you're asking me about the masters in general whether or not we you should get the masters at all i would say that you are on the right track with your assumption or like your idea that it might be better for you to go directly into work because the thing is that uh, around 80 percent of all developers are people with just like a bachelor's degree in a related area such as computer science or engineering or something like that so getting a master's is a little bit i'm not saying overkill necessarily because there are certain situations where this might be useful of course it looks good on your cv if you're gonna apply for a job but the thing is that as soon as you get past like a just a year or two statistically one to five years of work experience the degree that you have is practically pointless then it's much then other things are much much more important so what i want you to take away from this is that i uh, basically 
I would say to you that if your desire is to learn about hacking or your desire is to learn about programming, think about these two things as being very different sorts of uh, occupations. Because a pen tester, although they might use programming and find a use for it, it's not they're not going to be trained in programming to the same extent as a software developer and vice versa is of course true. I mean most of my coworkers and myself included have like our understanding of cybersecurity is limited to what we do in our personal time and maybe if we're really interested looking at the OWASP top 10 exploits and just knowing some basics about how to exploit the system. The real professionals are much, 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 much better than we are at this sort of stuff. So it's a different type of perspective, right? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Have a great day.